I know it's the end of the day, so I'll try to get through this quickly. Um, been quite a day of innovation, as I always find at these, but I found a lot of validation today. So I thought that was kind of nice seeing other companies that were actually already solutioning. So we're going to talk through the, um, am I doing the slides from up here? OK. Um, we're going to talk through um, what AGCO has put in place. So first of all, I wanted to speak to who AGCO is, for those that don't know. About a $7 billion company, and we make um, agricultural equipment, very large, very complex, uh, very low volume manufacturing tractors, uh, spray equipment, combines, um, and, and, and actually grain bins now. And I think it's important before we go into what we've accomplished to talk a little bit about the culture. So we're a very lean culture at AICO, and we consider this whole augmented and wearable solutioning just a further, um, further in our path of lean. So this is part of our lean program. We actually have three key people on the team. One's a lean person, one's an IT person, and one's a manufacturing person. And that's all it's really taken because we have a very empowered culture there of employees asking to make their work easier, better, more efficient, and higher quality. So as you can see on the right, we do a shop floor management. We have meetings in the morning with shift startups. We have department meetings right after that, and then we have a leadership meeting. Everyone's communicating and um, talking about uh, what needs to be solved for the day. I will say that here we have the, the small boulders and the large. Continuous improvement really started us into the augmented world. But uh, now it's become part of our larger picture. It's actually one of our visions for the next five to ten years. And the whole facility is um, its one of the biggest projects that we have. So here's the problem. This is, this is the story of our, our solution. Um, a lot of people today have talked to the fact that you can't get into this without really a problem to solve, something that you're actually trying to come out the other side. So we had, um, it actually goes before this, we had people that were walking on and off um, tractors going over to computers to put in information. Information wasn't accurate, it may have been redundant, it may have been just a check mark, um, and we wanted to stop them from having to go up and down off tractors. So we gave them tablets. We thought we were very, very smart ahead of the time. And uh, the tablets didn't work very well because they, that's a $3,000 tablet, that one's not, but what we have is a $3,000 rugged tablet. And when you leave them on the track of a tractor or drop them more than a couple of times from more than four feet, they look just about like that. So they're, they're pretty much useless. So we went back into our problem solving mode and we came up with two things. We could go to the brand newly announced um, glass that had just come out for the consumer. Or we could get a bunch of duct tape and duct tape all their equipment to them so they couldn't drop it on the floor anymore, which is what IT wanted to do. So um, <laughs> we, we tried to get past that. So. So, so we went on our journey. So this isn't a short journey. It feels like it to us. We've accomplished a lot. But we started then with one pair of consumer Google Glass and um, just had to figure out all the questions everyone had. Batteries and does it overheat and can you wear it all day? So we started playing with them, got to the point that we decided, yeah, this is a viable tool. And so we had to find some application development. So um, went out looking. There was really no one in the world doing what we were doing. There was some medical industry that was doing it. And we found uh, Prosthetic. So Peter Verstraten and his team um, got on board with us and listened to our story and also wanted to accomplish um, solutions in manufacturing. From there, we had the um, pushing rope of IT. We talked about that a little bit today. Right? People talked about the fact that IT really didn't want to get on board. They didn't want to hit the security and the risk issues that came with it. And um, so we got past the network side of it and the risk management. And then we were ready to walk out the door onto the plant floor and realize we can't take this to the plant floor. We don't have any OSHA certified safety wear that will allow us to do this. So we went to our PPE partner, who is 3M, and um, they made us some prototypes that were OSHA certified. And we started off with a few pairs of Google Glass on the floor in about September of 2014 um, to see how the, how the users would do with it. Our first pilots, quality inspection or quality gates, simple checklists. Um, then we went into paint prep, taking the work instructions away from the people there and allowing them to actually um, visualize what they had to do to prep, to plug, to caulk um, on a paint, um, pre-paint. And then we went into assembly standard work. So these have all been logical steps as we've gone along. And the employees are asking for them now. Again, we're a lean culture and these are solutions. We have problems and there are ways to solve the problems. Um, hit the scalability and security side, we've worked with Augmate and AirWatch, just making sure that our device management 
is strong and supports everything that we're trying to do. Um, we're running all of our global solutions right now in wearables from Jackson, Minnesota, and anyone that hasn't been to the northwest corner of Jackson, it's a very, very small, very hard to get to, and um, we're, we're doing all of the site management for all of our wearable solutions out of that location. So we went to production mode in January of 2017. We have probably, um, with all wearable solutions on the floor, we have um, just under 200, and um, our coworkers are wearing and using them every day. So this was the aha moment we had then as we started coming to all these, we're like, hey, we're doing that, hey, we're doing that, hey, we're doing that. And it was just to solve problems. So we're not trying to eliminate employees, we're trying to make our employees smarter. And um, we're trying to make sure the information they need is where they need it at the point in time they need it, and um, that it's in a form that they can use. So, you know, is, is a smart eyewear the solution for everybody? Absolutely not. We have some of our tugger drivers um, using Apple Watches, and they're doing andons. They actually do just in time to the line with um, materials when their watch tells them that it's time to, that the whole process has cycled. Um, we're obviously still using PLCs, visual management, and all the other tools. We're implementing torque tools right now that will be smart and also talk to the coworkers, letting them know what they need to know to get the job done right. And um, we are a plant of AGVs. All of those are sharing information with each other. So at the end of the day, the coworker, the employee, can do his job better, smarter, higher quality, and at better cost for us. So this was the first test we had. This was quality, and actually um, talked a little bit about it when Augmate was up here. But we went into um, tractor quality, and it was kind of our first test, and we thought, oh, this is kind of cool, and it was fun. Um, it was, we were amazed. I mean, we were stunned at the, um, the reduction in the amount of time it took to do that job from actually writing it on paper and then entering it in the computer, getting on and off of the tractor to actually do that job. And then if you had an issue, you had to put it into a log that later in the day would get trended and that quality issue would be um, sent out so the next day it didn't occur again. So we, we have non-conform built into the tool. Procedix has built that in for us. If you have an issue on glass, you can tell it you have an issue and you can send that issue directly to quality so that they come over, figure out what the issue is and make sure that the next three units down the line don't have the same issue. So tomorrow I won't have four problems, I have one problem and I'm gonna address it right now. Um, we found that the time, you can see here, a lot of it was just the paper processing, but since then we've learned that um, the quality um, has gone way up, right? Because you have to follow the process, you have to take the pictures, there's augmented built in, there's thresholds, if you're, without, if you're outside of that threshold, it will stop you there and you have to fix that before you can move on. The, the, the big place we're using it right now, and um, again, big, huge wins that we didn't even look at, is in assembly. So our assembly team now wears glass for standard work. And um, the question came up earlier, do you have all of your employees go through every single step if they already know how to do it? Do you just make them go through? We have all of our employees going through every single step. And the funny part is, you may ask, um, the older employees who have been there a long time and have all the tribal knowledge, enjoy the product better than the younger employees. They, they are so happy to have the knowledge at their fingertips so that they can actually do their job more accurately. Now remember, every tractor going down the line, every sprayer is a snowflake. No two are the same. So they can't know every single time what to do and how to do it and what all of those configurations are that go into that unit. So we put that on the floor. It's uh, reduced the production cycle times dramatically. Um, we are using it now for predictability or line balancing. Um, we can do it from a daily schedule perspective, uh, or we can do it just from operation to operation. Another great piece, and this was the big um, surprise to us, cross-functional training. So we do three by three training in our, in our uh, facility, which means every operation has to have three people that can do it, and every person has to be able to do three operations. And we've been saying that since the five, six years I've been there now that that's the way it was supposed to be. It's hard to get past one by one when you're a highly complex, low volume plant. Now, we can take with glass, move them from operation to operation, they've gone through Assembly Academy, they know all how to use the tools, how to do the job, they just need something telling them exactly what to do when they're in that operation. 
So we've had incredible advancement with on-the-job training. We've actually reduced our um, training time 50%. So it used to take about 10 days, two people, one trainer, and one being trained, and now it takes about three days to learn the job, and it's one person working through with um, wearable technology and, uh, and, um, and their um, standard work on the technology. So 50% reduction and the quality has gone up. So you can put new people that just started or people that have never worked in that op, and each time we've seen an incremental increase in the quality that happens within that work cell, taking out the tribal knowledge and making sure they're following the steps on the standard work. And finally, of course, the time savings, 25 to 35% time savings. And that's just monumental when you have as long of a talk time as we have operation to operation. So, so this is our new normal. I put some pictures up for you. The top, the top one is our material handler as he's getting uh, messages. Of course, he supports more than one line. He supports eight lines because they're sub-assemblies. Tells him where to go and what to bring. Um, the others are, you can see, uh, not only does the standard work instruction to assembly um, show them the picture of what it's supposed to look like and what they're doing, but it gives them the bill of material for all that um, line side inventory, the hardware, that they used to have to walk across the aisle um, take it in their head, figure it out, or write it on a post-it, come back over, pick all those nuts and bolts, and go back to the line. So now they're wearing that with them. And then, of course, the final piece of it is um, the status. All the way through this process, they're, re they're recording back in how that step went, if there were issues, so that we can go back and trend any of the issues that are happening. The bottom middle is paint prep. So she's using, she's using um, smart eyewear there to caulk and plug as she's getting things ready to go into paint. Next steps. Now the cool part about next steps is we talked a little bit at the beginning about culture. Um, these are next steps because everybody now wants something to do with wearable technology because they've seen the efficiency, they've seen the quality improvements, and they know how much easier it makes their life. So we're currently working with um, the weld area. Um, we have you know 30 foot booms. You have to weld in a certain place um, in a very structured order at a very structured heat for the structured amount of time. Um, they can actually see that now as they go, all that control point data. Predictability, we talked about, we are, um, we're able to scale if our, if our volumes go up or down or the complexity of the units coming down the line changes, uh, we can predict that up front and know where we're going to need ex extra operators or people that are going to have to have um, understanding of how to do that task in that operation. Supply chain, we talked a little bit today about picking. Uh, we're just getting into the picking world and um, see what I see. So for us, timing, as we all talked about today, a uh, tractor goes down in the field or a um, any kind of equipment, uh, weather's coming in, it's gonna rain tomorrow, that could be the difference between pulling the crop and not. So farmers wanna be serviced now, and you can't always get the expert to the farm in the field to figure out what's going on. So now we have um, tech services can go out and, and feed back into a, a uh, expert in the office and actually, um, hopefully, um, diagnose and fix that while they're standing there. And then the tour experience. We do a lot of tours in Jackson. We have a spectacular plant, probably a lot because of the lean context of it. And so um, we're trying to get to the, where we can have beacons and things can show um, some of those more critical aspects of robotics and AGV that you can't always see when you walk through. They're not always running. And um, you'd actually be able to see that through the glass. And that's who, my, that's who I am, Peggy Gulick, director. And um, that's just our little, there's a site out there, an AGCO site, that has a lot of this information out there for anyone that's interested in trying to follow similar paths. I, I agree with everyone today, it's problem solving. It's problem solving 101. We just have better tools now to um, give to our employees to make them smarter and better at what they do. Thanks, Peggy. Um, sorry, this on? Cool. All right, so Peggy's, you know, Peggy's one of the earliest pioneers in, uh, in using smart glasses at, at ATCO. Um, I've followed her work for the last uh, three or four years, and uh, you're one of the earliest pioneers. So if you're a large enterprise looking to get started on the technology, there aren't that many people better than her, if at all, in the world that's... Uh, Thank you. That's, uh, that's other than Peggy, so you should definitely seek her out and get, get some advice on getting started. So, lots of questions, as uh, I might have uh, predicted. So, um, Peggy, I'll, I'll leave you two to answer them one by one. 
One by one. Oh my gosh. Okay. Do you think you'll always stay with glass or would you explore other newer technology? Um, you know what? Right tool, right place, right time. So um, we're as competitive as anybody else. For right now, that is the best tool for us. So it has some augmented to it, has a lot of informed. And we found on the floor with safety that um, we've had better luck with employees wearing them all day long if it's an informed type of reality versus something that's always overlaying their reality, right? Something that's always in front of your eyes. I will tell you one other thing, and this is spectacular from our application side, um, battery life for our wearables now is about 10 to 14 hours. So that's been spectacular. Um, did you add employees for content development or outsource? So here's another really cool, that's a really great question. So our, um, the person who runs our plant, Eric Fisher, said, yep, you know, Peg, you can go out and play with all this stuff and see what you can do, but um, you cannot change our standard work. You cannot change the way we store it, we look at it. You have to use what we have. Now, it's not that he didn't think we'd ever change it, but he knows that if you spend two years trying to do that, the momentum is going to go down. So we are using exactly what we've always used for standard work. And um, we worked with Prosthetix, and they found a way to make sure in the glass it was completely visible. So, you know, we have a spectacular tool with Zoom and Pan, and we can do anything that we could have done on a computer, only we can do it all right on our heads. So it was a great thing, and it's something that everyone should do in business. I thank Eric Fisher every day. Don't try to change all of it. Try to take what you have that you do well and then make that into that next step solution. So um, we're using exactly what we have. Now as standard work changes, it's no different than any other company. Our manufacturing engineers own the changes in standard work to make sure that those instructions are always accurate. And manufacturing people own the poking the manufacturing engineering when they're not accurate. All right. So. I know that uh, we're a little over time. Um, thanks, thanks again to Peggy. And uh, any other questions, feel free to see her out again.